So what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much for joining us again for another Q&A session for Sign Save Sharks. My name is Vicky Chivel, and then joining us today is the birthday boy, Ralph Watson. Ralph, thank you very much for having Thank you very much for coming on the show, man. Uh, thank you very much, Dickie. Glad to be back. Yeah, man. I even baked you uh, a COVID <laughs> birthday cake, bro. So, oh, thank yeah, you man. so much. <laughs> okay, guys, for those of you that might not have joined on our on our Wednesday show, um, we were talking about mark recapture and answering important ecological questions about sharks. Um, but before we jump into that, we just want to say that the weather is a bit um, crazy over here. We are going through quite a crazy storm. It's really cold outside, as you guys can see. Um, how warmly I'm dressed at the moment. Ralph, you're not yeah. wearing a beanie or anything, but you've got the sweat on. So if we yeah. cut out or there's any interruptions, guys, we do apologize. We will then just record a video which we will then post at a late a date. Um, George, thanks, bro. Thanks, thanks for wishing us happy birthday and thanks for watching. It's not my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I so, spoke with George earlier, so thank you, George. Awesome. Um, so, guys, I'm going to jump into the first question, Ralph, that we got, and it is from... Nikita Sharkbite, and he's asking this to you. He's saying, as a fellow biologist, I'm just going to rephrase it, but as a fellow biologist, basically he's going to be asked, he's asking about the stress levels and also the pain that the sharks are possibly going through. Are they going through it? And also are they going through stress? Um, and he just wants to know what's your opinion on that when it comes to when it comes to mob creek capture. Yeah, that's an incredibly interesting question. Uh, thanks, Nikita. So that question can basically be like split apart into two levels. Uh, like on the one hand, stress levels, and on the other hand, like the pain levels that sharks go through. Now, stress-wise, it really depends on the shark species. Uh, some shark species are incredibly stress-prone. Uh, for example, hammerhead sharks. They're uh, they go, especially with larger ones, when you catch through that process. And my, after release, it might look like they're swimming off normally. They might actually die from like an overexposure of stress hormones in their body. So it's like, uh, probably best uh, to only tag hammerheads if you're an absolutely 100% experienced tagger in that regard so even if you're like uh, a normal fisherman or so and you think like oh i've got a hammerhead let me take it on shore and like measure it and tag it and all of that i would avoid it or i would suggest avoiding it and just let the hammerhead shark i'm going to go more towards smaller ones like cat shark species they're incredibly stress resilient and they can go through some cases like uh, some of them are known to do quite well in aquaria, like very contained spaces. And some of them are, has, as you know, with white sharks, they've gone through uh, body damage. That's almost like, wow, a person would not be able to go through that. So some shark species are more resistant and resilient than other species. So if you're working with cat sharks or species like that, uh, the stress levels are possibly going to be relatively low. However, keep in mind it is species specific. On the other hand, pain levels, that's also a very interesting question. Uh, yeah, so we apply the tag or like Ori suggests applying the tag uh, near or next to the dorsal fin uh, above like the muscle layer. The sharks have a muscle layer on the top of their body. So it stays away from any vital organs, nerve like nerve endings, also stays away from the face and all of that. So uh, it's applied in an area where there's relatively little nerve endings. Now they might feel like a little prick, like, uh, like with a syringe in a person or something like that. But it's also like very important that you apply the tag in like not too far into the skin, just like as far as the anchor is required. So yeah, also the, depending, like it's very important to know where on the body uh, the tag is applied. 
And that's what Ori also teaches you as you apply for sign up for to become a member. So they do go through that. Yeah, obviously they've taken as much. Um, thank you very much, Ralph. And I couldn't explain it better, obviously, because obviously they've taken as much, um, put as much thought as this into this as possible. And what you're saying is so crucial. The location of the tag um, is mm -hmm. so crucial. We, when we're taking biopsies of whales as well, I've noticed um, that if you take a biopsy in a certain area, the whale will almost... Um, it will have almost no effect on the whale, but even moving just a bit higher up towards the spine where there's more nerve endings, the whale will definitely react. Um, yeah. so, so, Dicky, just one second. So, uh, I've got a slide here with me. So, it's from a presentation that we used to yeah. uh, teach our interns. And it's actually like it's taken some images from Ori as well. So, I'm just going to share my screen very quickly. And you should be able to see this now. Just let me know yeah, if you do. Ahead. All right. So as you can see, it's like uh, with a shark, like uh, a black tip shark there, it's right next to the dorsal fin. If you're working with like stingrays or like a more flat rays like that, uh, the tag will be positioned dorsal fin or... Uh, near the tail for the skate. So it avoids all the vital organs. And then as you can see with a bony fish, it's like just at the top of the body next to the fins over the ridge. And also in a, the best place on the body where it can be positioned. Awesome. Um, yeah, thank you. So bro, uh, there's another question that we had um, <laughs> that I want to get to. I think um, that one is oh, for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Dude, I'm freezing. Outside, actually, where I am right now, it's raining and it's freezing because the door broke. I don't know if you guys watched a couple of live episodes back, but the door is still actually broken. And I've got this really cold breeze coming in. So it's really, really chilly. But other than that, um, thank you. Thank you for joining in. Um, Ralph, I wanted to ask you, is there any species that you don't want to tag or any regulations when it comes to the ori maybe size maybe different species that you don't want to be tagging yeah so uh when it comes to fish and shark species what ori is aimed at uh the tags actually come at a specific size so this is the one and then there's another tag that's slightly bigger but as a result of that it means that you don't want to tag animals that are for which the tag is too big that it actually inhibits them so they've put a size limit on it of about 30 centimeters obviously if you're dealing with a very long very thin fish then uh they would suggest like not tagging those either so as long as the tag again doesn't inhibit the natural movement or growth of the animal and also ori is aimed at fish and shark species so any marine mammals are completely off limit actually by law unless you have a specific permit to work with marine mammals they're completely off limit for any tagging or research or stuff like that and obviously seabirds as well so don't go around tagging penguins yeah um that well that i hope that makes logical sense to everybody guys i did try looking four stories of people tagging themselves. And as I was looking for it, I didn't really, um, I don't think it's something people would advertise. Um, Ralph and I spoke about it earlier. It's not something that you would generally advertise. It makes for a good pub story. So yeah. unfortunately, I couldn't find any photos or examples, but I did speak to one of my mates who is hectically into the Ori. His name's Peter the Toy. And he's a keen fisherman from the Khanspa area where we are. And he told me a very interesting story. He once tagged a bronze whaler of high clip that we have here. And a year and a half later, his son caught that exact same shark. Um, it was either a year or a year and a half. Um, that his son caught the exact same shark in the exact same spot. And then a year or a year and a half later... His friend's son also caught that exact same shark at the exact same spot. 
Well, that's absolutely a fantastic story. So yeah, again, like with the tag, it's got an ID number on it. So obviously, you know, it's the same shark. But also like, as I talked on Wednesday, it's like, uh, for a lot of shark species, certain areas are vitally important to them, either for reproduction Like you say, it's like if it's been caught like year after year in the same location, it means that that area is very important for that species. Now, you and I both know like bronze whalers are seasonal, so we do find them a certain time of the year and then other times of the year they're actually gone elsewhere. But that is caught the same time, place over and over again is very like to see like put an acoustic transmitter on a few of them, uh, stuff that you and Ali talked about and see, does the result of this ORI tagging, is that supported by acoustic telemetry and where do they go afterwards? So this only shows it's reappearing in the same location. Now it's interesting to see where are they going elsewhere? Oh, well, that's uh, Roger. Um... A uh, very interesting question. I think Ralph almost, <laughs> almost yeah. sort of answered it there. If he's not trying to tell us anything else, he's telling us that is an important ground, um, possibly breeding ground for these sharks. Do you agree, Ralph? Yeah, uh, it's very difficult to say based on like just them being there, but it could be reproduction, breeding. Uh, it could be a f important food uh, location for them as well or depending on how the shark behaves, whether it's an aggregation site, an area for them to socialize. Yeah, yeah, it could just be a bunch of sharks hanging out at the spot, <laughs> at the spot. you never know. Again, again, warrants further research. Yeah, um, but one thing that we have is South Africa, a world leader in tagging ethics. Ralph, I'm gonna hand this over to you. That's a very good question. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but Ori does, does definitely try to be part of that. So uh, the tags that uh, Ori uses comes from Australia. And I know that Australia also has a tagging project simi uh, similarly. But whether they're a world leader in the ethics of it, I definitely try think Ori is trying to be like right at the top there. So. And um, all I know is from our side, from Marine Dynamics, we, when we are tagging our sharks, um, our great white sharks as well, we are definitely using trained staff. All of us have been trained to do this. Um, and we sterilize our, our pins that go into the sharks. We always try to get the position spot on once again positioning on the sharks is very very important so when it comes to ethic when i'm speaking from our side and also people that i've worked with in south africa tagging the sharks um what i've seen is we're definitely um i'm not i can't speak for if we're the best but i know we're definitely way up there um mm. when it comes to our side marine dynamics and the people that i have worked with around the south african coastline for sure mm. Absolutely. It's, uh, but it's also like sometimes you try to aspire to as high as possible. So you do become very self-aware of like how we do things. But there's always cases of like when we go overseas and like we talk with other people, they give us tips and hints just to ele uh, ele uh, elevate us even further. And that's important, like very uh, being self-aware and keep on learning. Like there's always the uh, stuff that you can do to make yourself better. Yeah, 100%. And guys, um, I have seen in certain places, I have spoken to some biologists um, this as well. Ralph, we didn't discuss this further because this didn't come up, but I have spoken to a biologist around our coastline who has actually removed the tag because of some reason the anti-fouling or whatever on this specific tag was not proper so it had a, a large amount of growth on the tag and that actually ended up creating a lot of drag for the animal so he actually removed it as well so not just when tagging but also looking after the animals um in the vicinity that have tags on um i know 
I definitely know we are trying our best to be as ethical as possible when it comes to things like that. Other than that, if there's no more questions, do you have anything more to add? Around? No, I think like the uh, stuff that I didn't spoke about, I did, uh, do think I mentioned during this talk. So with the size and the species and all of that. But yeah, so it, but if people do have questions that they want uh, answer, you can leave a comment, hashtag science safe sharks, and then and maybe we can uh, touch upon it at a later time and then uh, I'll be able to answer it. Yeah, guys, and please always, if you guys have questions, if you guys have comments, message us on our Facebook or Instagram. Um, we're always available. Check out our YouTube channel. And then, yeah, man, always drop, mm -hmm. drop us an email on our DICT as well and go check out some of the research and stuff we are doing on the Dyer Island, Island Conservation Trust website, dict.org.za. Um, there you can see what Ralph is up to with with the interns as well as some of our conservation projects. So, and okay, is there another question? Has there been any pain threshold testing for tagging? For example, how painful is it in human terms? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but that's an absolutely fantastic question. And I actually love that question now. It's like... Not anything that I'm aware of. From, from not that I'm aware of, but also uh, there's very little known about how sharks register pain. So again, like it's a, it's a question that requires a lot of ethical considerations to answer. It's not something like, uh, say, if we were in the 1800s where we could just say, take a shark, test the nerve and like cut it open, test the nerve ending, stuff like that. We are, a lot of scientists around the world are very ethically aware when it comes to answering a question like this, where you really have to be aware of like, what, how far can I go to answer a question? So in human terms, it's very difficult to answer because we, we just don't know. Uh, but one thing I can tell you from the expedition project from, from my side is I know, for instance, great white sharks don't like getting hurt. I've seen them bump a boat um, or in some instance a cage before. If these sharks get hurt, they will generally leave the area. Um, mm. They will leave it for a certain amount of time. They won't come back. But usually... I've seen many a time after tagging um, a great white shark with an acoustic tag, um, they tend to stick around the boat. Yeah. So they so, will react. They do, they do give that initial reaction, but they won't mm -hmm. leave the area. And that to me just says that they haven't gone through a traumatic experience or an increasingly painful experience. Ralph, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a very good answer, Dickie. It's uh, like obviously like using the acoustic uh, transmitter and like the way we attach them, it's not enough for them to go, uh, wait a minute, I got hurt, I need to leave the area now. But again, like it's a question that it depends on the species again as well. <laughs> Yeah, so it depends on the species as well. So white sharks obviously or might have a higher pain threshold than other shark species. But again, like it's a very interesting question that should uh, like warrants further investigation within ethical limits. Yeah. And guys, if any more questions, hey Luke, hey guys, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have any more questions, proud of you. Oh, that's my brother. Thanks, bro. <laughs> You too, always. That's so cool, man. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching, fam. Um, so if there's no more questions, and Ralph, I think me and you have covered more or less ev everything that we've wanted to say for now on this topic. And, and I must say, this has been a very cool topic, and I really enjoyed it. Um, thank you very much for all your information. Next week, we will be speaking to Miss Kelly Baker again, um, Detective Baker. Um <laughs> What's the last one um, that I did with Kelly where she 
she um, identifies the shark dorsal fins by the old school Sherlock Holmes method. But we will be speaking to Miss Baker again, and I'm very excited for that. Other than that, Ralph, thank you very much for joining us, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. And as we always say, go check out our Facebook, our YouTube, hashtag Science Safe Sharks. If you guys have any questions, we'll definitely try um, to definitely try to get to you guys in one of these sessions, if not. And Ralph, what did you mention the other day about sort of um, a private, private sort of session? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we are starting a mentorship session. So for those of you who are interested in more of a one-on-one -on -one in-depth uh, talk or lesson from one of our marine biologists, uh, please visit the email address below, academy at marinedynamicstravel.com. And then hopefully, like at a later date, we'll be able to work something out on a one-on-one -on -one basis, depending on what you are interested in. Yes. Guys, check it out. These guys, obviously, as you guys can see, very intellectual in their fields. And I learn a lot from these guys all the time. So, Ralph, once again, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And have an awesome weekend. We'll see you guys again on Wednesday. Thank you. Happy all birthday, right. Ralph. <laughs> thank you very much. Enjoy your birthday, man. Yo, cheers, guys. Have a nice weekend. We're still live, guys. <laughs> <laughs>